Uh, well, hello everyone online and in the room once again. Uh, today I would like to talk about an experience of collaborative literary translation that uh, my students had uh, this uh, last spring uh, during our uh, literary translation course. Uh, so first of all, I would like to try to define a collaborative translation. It's an activity of uh, working in a group with the aim of producing a translation. Or to quote O'Brien, the situation where two or more translators work together to produce one translated product. I mean, uh, we can say that, and uh, uh, referring to Kirali, that it is a key element of the social uh, constructivist approach to translation, translate, translator training, sorry, and it is a form of collaborative learning. Um, we can also distinguish cooperation and uh, collaboration because cooperation includes non translation tasks. Uh, on the one hand, and a possibility of working independently. For instance, we can imagine uh, two translators translating one text, uh, different parts of the same text. Mm? They are dividing their job. While uh, the, in uh, collaboration, uh, it implies joint work and direct interaction during um, lot, uh, such as discussion, negotiation, etc. Uh, collaboration as well can be synchronous or asynchronous, as we will uh, see in our example. Uh, Kirali uh, considers uh, that translator competence is a creative, largely intuitive, socially constructed and multifaceted complex of skills and abilities. And I think we can all agree. And uh, uh, it, he says that uh, translator competence uh, emerges while he's working in group. So I will once again quote Kirali, learning is best accomplished through meaningful interaction with peers as well as full-fledged members of the community to which learners are seeking entry. Rather than attempting to build up, to build up students' translation-related skills and knowledge automatically in simulated exercises prior to translation practice, it would be much more constructive to start each pedagogical event with a highly realistic, and if possible, genuine translation project. So uh, the teacher here uh, in the conception of Kirali, uh, he, he should be translator himself, so literary translator in our, in our case, and he's there to guide students and not to impose himself uh, and his opinions. Uh, he's not a central figure. He's like a coach, let's say, a guide. Uh, this uh, helps the, student, uh, the students in their future uh, professional lives because of uh, they, it empowers them and uh, it gives them um, on the one hand, hand responsibility uh, and on the other uh, awareness and the self uh, respect, let's say, um, and the respect of the profession. So um, at the University of Zadar, Department of French Language and Francophone Studies, we have a Master of uh, French Language and Literature Translation. It's a two-year double major program, so we uh, split it, uh, we, we um, um, uh, share it with another uh, program, it's a double major, so uh, in considering the ECT credits, it's um, only a half uh, that we, we can uh, use, but we have three literary translation courses, uh, literary translation, contemporary translation theories and poetics, and reception of translations and translation critique. So there we do uh, theory as well as practice. We are analyzing the existing translations. We are producing uh, translations, working on mostly on authentic translation projects. Not always, it's not possible, but we are really looking uh, to, to do that. And uh, the students have also the possibility uh, through internship to do some practical works and to work, cooperate with um, um, uh, professionals. Uh, also, they can do a master thesis in literary translation. Uh, which implies uh, a part of uh, where uh, literary text is translated and the part where it is analyzed. And they have also some extracurricular translation activities, such as uh, um, we have um, a competition translation uh, contest uh, for the best uh, uh, student translation and a poetic marathon, marathon that uh, our colleague Rafaela Bozic uh, is. Uh, um, uh, um, organizing every year and which implies so uh, uh, students as well as uh, professors they're working together on some really um, concrete texts. 
so this is what we have produced, not, not uh, the only things, but some of those, uh, uh, some of the works we have produced together with um, the students at our department, some novels, uh, anthology of sh uh, uh, short stories. We are regularly uh, uh, publishing uh, the translate, students' translation in a literary magazine Tema. And then this is the book uh, that I will talk about, uh, Seul dans la ville, uh, entre 9h et 10h30, de Yves Grevet. Uh, a French author, uh, it's a novel, uh, which can be translated as Alone in the City between 9 and 10.30 uh, a.m. It's a detective fiction for teens, uh, consists on, uh, on 13 chapters and an epilogue. Uh, you can see it's quite a huge novel. I mean, for uh, the students, uh, it contains more than 200 pages. Uh, protagonists are high school students. And the plot is more or less French teacher gives them a task to find a, a place in the city, stay there for an hour and a half and observe the surroundings um, and write about it in a freestyle composition. So since there are 25, we will have 25 compositions in the novel. Uh, they will be quite diff various, uh, but the, the thing is that the murder happens in the period they are observing uh, their surroundings. So uh, two students will investigate and resolve the mystery but uh, uh, thanks to the pieces which are hidden in the composition, in the text that uh, the students have uh, written. So uh, we have an autodiagetic narrator, youngster involved in investigating the murder, a lot of dialogues, contemporary youth speech, culturally specific elements, uh, because uh, it's a high school in France, so you have a, a bac, uh, baccalaureate and uh, a lot of things that are really culturally specific and a variety of composition uh, genres and styles uh, in the students' uh, compositions, like poetry, reportage, thriller, technical list, documentary, advertisement, description, portrait, etc., etc. So it's an excellent translation training text. In a novel, you have plenty of different uh, texts. Uh, my objective uh, was uh, to train translation skills, obviously, to train critical thinking, decision-making, and self-assessment, to train uh, thematic research, uh, workflow management and self-organization, to enhance social competence and teamwork as an important part of professional competence, to combine learning from peers and from the teacher, to motivate students by working on an authentic literary text which will effectively be published, because the novel and the translation will be published uh, soon, and to produce a coherent literary translation ready to be published which is not um, the case when the students are working alone. I mean, the product is not really uh, pu publishable uh, immediately. So uh, we ha I had 11 students on that course and that was uh, pretty much an exception because normally there, were, there are five or six, but since uh, I'm on my sabbatical year, I joined the two uh, years and so there were 11. So a huge novel and a lot of students, which makes some uh, problems. And we had uh, 15 weeks as usual per, uh, semester. Uh, and the problem number one is if everyone translates one part of the novel, the translation will not be stylistically coherent. So I thought that a collaborative translation uh, in two groups, so, so I divided them in two groups of five and six students, I thought that it might uh, resolve the problem. The problem number two, in unequal translation skills of the first and the second year students, and I also thought that a collaborative translation could resolve this problem because they will discuss uh, the problems, uh, the difficulties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The problem number three, of course, length of the novel solution. Uh, I imagine that uh, I will do a preparatory class and then that we will translate one chapter per week. A final class, the 15th class, would be uh, reserved for uh, the translation of the epilogue uh, and the paratext. So uh, notice a biography of the author and the back cover page um, translation. And the problem number four, due to pandemics, we had online classes. So uh, I, I thought that it could be maybe trans, uh, transformed to an advantage. Um, the work was organized in eight phases, which I will try to explain now. So the preparatory or introductory phase uh, was the first class in our class classroom. So I explained the task, the methodology, the aims, the agenda, and I introduced the work and the author quite generally, leaving uh, to them a uh, 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 work outside the classroom. Uh, so they had to read the book, 
to do some research on the author and the book and to retrieve potential translation problems to be discussed in the class. Then uh, we started a translation phase, a phase from the seven, second week uh, on, and they were, as I said, divided in two groups, and they translated one chapter per week. So every week, one student of each group was in charge of distributing the uh, work to be done, collecting the translations, putting all parts together in the form of a chapter and uploading it to a Google disk before the deadline. So a professional competence was also required in a certain way. It was like a project management. And uh, it was a combination of individual and group work of cooperation and collaboration, if you like, because they did translate, each one translated his own part, but then they discussed it together. I will uh, show you how. Uh, the third phase was cross-reading phase. Members of each group uh, read the translation of the other group, give comments suggesting corrections or other solutions directly um, in the file, which is uh, sharing, shared uh, on Google Disk. And each group can also pick up a good solution. Uh, I told them, you can freely steal from each other. I mean, you can, if you think that this solu their solution is better, take it. So that was also a kind of decision making for them, uh, because um, afterwards we sh we discuss uh, discussed this uh, discussed it in class in the classroom. So uh, we were I mean it was not your solution versus mine. It was our solutions finally. The fourth phase was uh, the student revision phase. So after the second group uh, uh, gave some uh, remarks or suggestions, the first group. Um, did some corrections and uh, they uh, ought uh, what did uh, they had to send me their final version after uh, having it submitted to the other group side uh, view so uh, respect they respected deadlines it was uh, uh, it was really requested because after them i uh, had to read uh, both versions for the class so the student of the first year uh, group, uh, when he was asked about how the students proceed within each group, he answered, I quote, at the beginning of the week, we would divide the chapter into five sections and agree among ourselves who would translate which part of it. By Saturday, we would have sent our translations to a joint Facebook group, so we would all have time to read all the parts. On Sunday evening, we would meet on the Teams channel and usually spend two or three hours together commenting on all our translation. This is the whole chapter. During the week, we would comment on last week's translation of the second year group, either on the drive or on WhatsApp Messenger. So they use different tools, as, as you can see. We would solve problem, possible doubts and problems on Sunday evenings on Teams. They hated me probably, but uh, <laughs> by discussing, uh, I especially emphasize collegiality and mutual respect in the group, exchanging ideas, searching dictionaries, spelling, internet sources, etc., sharing screens. These were the main advantages of working on distance. In addition, so they really made it an advantage. In addition, this made it much easier for us to meet each week to review the translation. We would hardly be able to synchronize, synchronize live. Next phase was my uh, uh, so teacher revision phase. When I got the two, uh, um, um, two, two translations of the same chapter, I produced, I read them very carefully, and I produced a third version, picking up the most uh, of the solutions they have uh, proposed. But sometimes when it wasn't possible on, or where I thought, oh, there might be a third solution, I would add it in this third solution um, in a separate column. So there, we were, uh, each time in the classroom, we had three columns, three versions, first group, second group, and mine. Uh, taking into account uh, the, 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 the two, the both of them. So, and we discussed in the classroom. Um, in the classroom, so the three versions were compared and discussed, and uh, I prepared, I was uh, the one who was uh, 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 um, editing the text during the classroom, and then the semi-final uh, version was a result on, of this uh, discussion, 
in class where everybody could freely propose, uh, uh, disagree, agree. Uh, I commented some of them, some of their mistakes or um, when it wasn't really a good solution, I commented why it wasn't a good solution. When it was a good solution, I commented also why it was a good solution. So I did guide them, but uh, my voice was a voice among other, other, other voices. And it was, uh, it looked like this. So even if uh, uh, when they were um, when they were commenting, so those were Melinda, Christian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, these are the students, Antonella, etc., that are commenting uh, each other. So it, uh, it two groups commenting each other's uh, version. While my version, the third one, uh, what is marked in blue or in yellow, this is some something new. This is my uh, what, what I added to those uh, translations, and then uh, which uh, which uh, uh, should be discussed. Or when I put some uh, uh, when I marked the text in red uh, for their versions, it was that uh, for some reason I had to comment and why it wasn't all right. Um, and then I put everything in. Uh, I, I put it in clean the semi-final version of the chapter, and it was uh, once again revised by all students that could comment. Uh, and so uh, week by week, chapter by chapter, they commented um, on the uh, what was the semi-final version. At the end of semester, I put everything together and uh, did a proofreading uh, once again of the of the whole novel so to, so that a coherence can be um, assured and then i put it on google drive for a final proofreading by students so during the summer holidays they had the possibility to uh, to read it to comment it and there were some comments in fact uh, um, that uh, came um, and there were some uh, suggestions to to modify the text the final versions so as for the assessment uh, three parts of the novel uh, were assessed during the semester, one narration part, one dialogue part, and one sonnet. And uh, uh, they translated it individually. So they were 11 and they uh, did 11 uh, translations. So uh, when we commented it in class, uh, I picked two best, uh, as, uh, in my opinion, two best versions that were uh, commented in class. And uh, uh, for the sonnet, it was three versions. And it was a little bit more complicated. So uh, this is a, an original, uh, the original sonnet, uh, sonnet, and then three versions, three best versions that they produced. As you can see, it's still the best. Doesn't mean that it is it is um, um, acceptable for publication. Of course not. Uh, it had to be um, uh, reformulated and. Um, um, amended but uh, so these were we were we chose two versions afterwards and then we worked on they they chosen they have chosen two versions that we worked upon and then we produced the third version uh, we needed sometimes because there are there sometimes there were uh, variant uh, variants that we could uh, think of and uh, uh, put it in the text later on I gave them time to rethink some solutions. It, it wasn't like, okay, now we do the sonnet and then, uh, okay, we finished uh, and uh, uh, no more sonnet. So I gave him, I gave them time to rethink, to go back to this sonnet, to have some other solutions. So if, uh, uh, finally, uh, we are quite satisfied um, even with this uh, sonnet. And they uh, understood uh, which were, uh, the, um, uh, the the difficulties of translating a sonnet uh, as a fixed uh, fixed form uh, with all with its own um, 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 how to say uh, rules and uh, problems. Uh, as far as the student uh, student feedback, uh, there were some advantages and disadvantages that they uh, noticed. As far as the advantages uh, are concerned, they said that uh, it was a work in a group, finding solutions together that we could not reach on our own, exchanging ideas, learning a lot from each other, becoming aware of different ideas and solutions, easy retrieving of mistakes or, or bad solutions, critical thinking when confronted to different solutions, interesting translation discussions and debates, interaction during pandemics, enhancing creativity, solidarity, etc., etc. So um, it was anonymous. Uh, um, I, I asked them to, to give me some anonymous feedback so um, they, would, they could really speak freely. Um, uh, as far as other advantages are concerned, uh, involvement in the whole process, 
they really liked uh, becoming aware of the complexity of the process of translating a whole novel, confronting a trans translation as a work of art compared to other kinds of texts, learning about translation strategies, but also grammar, literary styles, language registers, etc. Learning how to speed up the whole process from translation to auto revision, learning about time management and responsibility. So the, those were the main advantages. And they quoted also, this is a little inquiry that I did, uh, five of them uh, answered uh, and uh, um, anonymously. So as far as the disadvantages are concerned, it's working tempo was too fast, of course. So one chapter per week, it was really hard work but probably reflects the professional deadlines, <laughs> they said. <laughs> a lot of different tasks to be done almost simultaneously, translating our own parts, analyzing and improving all the translated parts, revising the other group translation, revising chapter by chapter, and finally the whole text, with besides acquiring the theoretical part of the course, because there was one, of course. Uh, the invested effort was not equal. Some students did less, others had to work harder, mm -hmm. of course that is a dis disadvantage and it's good uh, for them to be aware of that it's always like that even when we work uh, professionally it's sometimes someone pulls uh, more than others it's always like that so uh, as for conclusive remarks in relation to the petra e framework we were discussing all uh, the afternoon uh, so we know now that uh, framework has, consists of eight competences uh, transfer, language, textual, heuristic, literary, cultural, professional, evaluative, and research com competence, and uh, containing different sub competences and descriptors for five levels. We all know that now. Uh, we can say that this collaborative translation project, Alone in the City, covers all competences except the research one. I put some uh, question mm, uh, mark because uh, one student will do her master thesis in. Uh, this novel, so she will do the research. In, in a way, even the research one is covered by, by her. Uh, in different proportions, mostly at L2 level, LT2 level, which is really um, understandable, advanced learner, it is expected, but also at LT3 level, early career professional, for some descriptors. But what I most uh, find the most important added values of the project of, the, of this project is professional competence, because they were uh, dealing with um, networking, entrepreneurial and professional skills, uh, translation debates. They were really uh, debating a lot about their solutions. Uh, and I was never imposing mine. I, I always said, okay, I propose this. Uh, if you don't agree, you're free to say, why, uh, why do you prefer another one, the fourth one? Maybe sometimes in our debates, there was a fourth one uh, that came out and that uh, we said, oh, it's much better. Um, so, uh, and the other competence is evaluative competence that was really um, an added value in this project because uh, they really had to reflect, uh, they to be critical, to compare, uh, to assess another, a translation so to evaluate uh, their own skills and uh, the other students skills uh, in, in and in this respect i think that uh, this collaborative literary uh, translation project was really successful even if now um, i'm completely aware that i should give them something more um, uh, less ambitious uh, 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 let's say 100 or 150 pages would do <laughs> even less Thank you for your attention. Oh. <laughs> oh, perhaps, yes, well, perhaps share the uh, share, yeah, share the podium briefly. Um, great. Oh, Vanda, thank you so much. Wow, what another uh, really fascinating project, and how how much I mean, what came across really is how how committed you need to be as well as an as an educator to making this all work it's very complex very time consuming and very uh, very brave i think of you as well it struck me i mean to be presenting your uh, translations equally for feedback and criticism uh, by the uh, students um, I think it was uh, for them also, it was uh, very precious to see how a professional uh, translator would do. Hmm. So they, they were comparing and uh, what is most interesting that uh, sometimes they really did something to say and it's, uh, they really uh, argumented 
uh, uh, for their own solutions and they really wanted to debate and discuss. Uh, we have a, um, a question from uh, Serena um, who says, well, your passion as a teacher shines through. I created such a project in specialized translation, so I know how much work goes into this kind of task. Questions, who signed the final translation? All of us. Okay. Uh, all of them, let's say. I was like a proofreader. Reader. <laughs> and, and, and then as a follow-up, how much work did you yourself put into the final version? Uh, yes. <laughs> now I'm on sabbatical, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but of course you need to say, but it was all worth it in the end. It was all worth yeah. it, I think, because uh, it really gives uh, them another uh, kind of uh, involvement and uh, passion and motivation when they know that uh, we are all together in this project that will be published. So I think it's really uh, very, very stimulating for them. Yeah, yeah. great. Okay. Um, ah. Uh, Ethne uh, asking, perhaps, well, uh, Ethne asking, do you do this every year? Almost. Yeah, I do that. Uh, sometimes it, it's really, uh, it's not so huge. Uh, so sometimes I pick uh, two or three or four novels, uh, um, uh, sorry, short stories, and uh, then we translate it together. Uh, but uh, yeah, th this was the occasion because when I... Um, uh, came uh, to, uh, when this novel came to me, uh, I thought it's, it's a great training material, so I really had to do it. <laughs> uh, we got a number of questions coming through. Thank you in the chat. Uh, Belen Santana, hello Belen. Uh, congratulations. Did you appoint some student in every group to be responsible for the final decision in case of disagreement? Uh, no, they no no they had to do it on their own. I didn't appoint the person who will be in charge. They they had to do it uh, between themselves. Okay, thank you. Um, Barbara says, fantastic presentation. Would you consider involving an editor from the publishing industry in future years? Uh, the, uh, this will be published uh, by a uh, uh, publishing house who has uh, its own editor, so it will be edited uh, professionally. But I think it, it will be a good uh, uh, translation product. So this is going to be a uh, it's a publisher I work uh, uh, a lot with, uh, so um, it it's not the first time uh, he already published some of those uh, uh, novels and books, uh, so it, it wasn't difficult, but uh, I, I imagine that even if I didn't work with him, that some other publishers would be interested too in this kind of, uh, because it's, an, it's a work in a class, it's a work in a class, so uh, they do not pay for a translation, so it's uh, like a gift to mm. them. And for students, it's very, quite motivating. So both parts have their... Um, it's a win-win situation, win -win situation, as they say, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Um, perhaps two more uh, questions from online. Um, uh, Leonardo asks, uh, is there a time before the translation itself when students are helped to build and acquire the competencies requested, or are they just left to learning by doing? Uh, no, no, uh, it's, uh, so uh, this happens um, at the uh, final semester of the, so it's uh, the second semester of the second year the final semester of the master. So previously they do acquire uh, competencies, uh, theoretical and practical, uh, translating other texts and analyzing existing uh, literary translations. So they are learning also by uh, looking uh, to what other uh, professional translators have done. Thank you. Um, Rodika asks, how did you manage to harmonize all these different voices in your translation? Uh, um, by producing only two uh, uh, translation uh, per chapter and two translation okay. for each group. So they did, they had to uh, discuss between themselves and then to come to a coherent solution. They know uh, because it's really, um, they, had, they have already competences, enough competences to know that they have to be coherent, uh, the, that they have to translate the terms uh, systematically. Uh, so uh, we discussed about that before uh, uh, beginning the translation. So we had we said, okay, there are some problems, there are some terms, terminology that are some points that had to be translated. And then uh, while we are while we, while we were translating, um, I also pointed some situations where they weren't coherent, where it should be. So um, let's say that I was guiding them uh, when it wasn't coherent, mm -hmm. so that we can assure, however. Uh, 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 coherence, uh, terminological, uh, stylistical, uh, all that sort. Uh, perhaps we can just take one final question again from Etne. Um, do you have um, 
do you have to acquire the translation rights first? Yes. So uh, the publisher had to acquire translation rights first. Yes, that's, that was uh, on him. Okay. Um, the... uh, no, it's not if Gam uh, if oh if Gambier. Uh, sorry, sorry. If, if Grove, Grove. No, it's my uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. subconscious. You know, <laughs> if Grove. <laughs> So we've just established, yes, uh, the first reference is slightly misleading. Yeah. It's not Yves Gambier, it's Yves Grevy. The um, questions are still coming through on the chat, but I think, um, yeah, which is a cool. testament to the, uh, the the tremendous richness of the project and of your uh, presentation. So, Vanda, thank you once again.